Hi and welcome to part three of the Thwaites Tusker technical series. In part three we'll be looking at the arm and hydraulic system. Hydraulic tank inside, if you remove this cover, is the hydraulic suction strainer. They are no longer obtainable from Thwaites. It fits onto a one inch BSP thread. It's very common to find them either removed entirely or people punch holes in them when they block because that would fix it, wouldn't it? Similarly, this um, hydraulic breather, the originals are no longer obtainable, but these are really standard items. This was something that Thwaites supplied me with on the basis that I'd be able to make it fit, and I did. It's a machine little adapter here, I made it a bit higher, which is a better job actually. Things like these hydraulic return hoses, this is actually a bit of a bodge here involving some 28mm copper pipe, but I've since identified a really good hydraulic supplier who can supply the gates oil resistant elbows. And one of my next jobs is actually to replace this pipe with something slightly more proper. Like all of the other rigid steel lines on this machine, the main supply pipe from the oil pump was an Aomito system and really not looking good and I replaced it with a flexible hose. I did worry about this at first but it seems to be the trend in machine manufacture that people are going away from using steel lines. People say oh well, the rubber ones break, well steel lines can fracture with no warning whatsoever and of course they cost more to make. So hydraulic uh, flexible hoses made up there and there's some other kind of dodges here. The filter under the seat filters the return oil, so you have a suction filter inside the tank. This is filtering the return oil. There's a built-in bypass in this filter, so that if and when this filter blocks, instead of blowing a hose, it just bypasses unfiltered oil back into the tank, and then you get a tank full of all sorts of horrible... Hydraulic control levers, another popular Thwaites Tusker woe. What happens is the spindle where it passes through this becomes really wobbly, all the levers get really really slack and it's just a nightmare to operate. What I've done is drill through this metal here and countersink the metal. This is a countersink nut, you could use a trailer wheel nut, anything with a countersink face, a conical face. So when I tighten that, same on the opposite end, it means this spindle is completely tight within this housing and the spindle is then unable to flop around. I think the original pin diameter on this was, oh, I don't know where it was, but I've run a drill through each of these arms to enlarge them to suit the damage of the spindle. And now the levers have just the little bit of backlash that tells you that they're all free, but without them being horribly wobbly, it's almost a joy to use. These bump stops already mentioned, no longer available. Um, these are from GMT Rubber in Leeds. They did have a four, four bolt hole mount and I've sort of trimmed them down to look like the original. And what these do is, as well as saving the slew rams from excessive strain when you get all the way round, they prevent this hydraulic hose being crushed against here. Um, and that kind of gets expensive when you start nattering hoses. So I've only recently got hold of these, and I'm quite pleased with them. These machines are extremely powerful for their size. They use a common hydraulic ram diameter and length throughout the machine. And these are much larger rams than what you'll find on an equivalent mini excavator of a similar size. This one has a different part number. The internals of the ram are the same, the only difference is that the pipe connections to it are different, the rest of the ram is identical. Very big powerful rams can do a lot of damage. Oh look, <laughs> a damage repair. This is typically a part of the Tusker that suffers. If you look at the parts catalogue, as the, the marks of machine increased with age, this is a Mark III dipper which I have updated to a Mark IV modification state with these strengthening plates. When I got my machine this bush was completely torn out and badly welded back on with pigeon poo. So uh, 
I've updated the machine and strengthened this area here. Similar tale of woe down here. Often these areas can become damaged. And it's important to note when you're operating it, the bucket ram has no pressure relief valve. The bucket ram operates on full hydraulic pressure. If you start digging in an incorrect manner, and the analogy I use, I'm not a trained excavator operator, but when you're digging, you want to be scraping up butter rather than scooping ice cream. If you start scooping ice cream, you're putting immense stress on the bucket ram and this quite small, all gets very small down here. Uh, I've seen these completely torn off. So there's a lot of repairs throughout this machine. Some of them, like the bush in this arm, I've just been able to knock the old brass bush out, knock a new one in, sorry, bronze bush and happy days. These links, however, were horrendously worn. So again, as with the jack legs, I've welded a top hat bush in and then reamed these out as matched pairs. Whilst looking at the front of the machine, this is another little mod I did. I welded on this attachment eye here and this shackle kind of lives permanently on here and it's been really handy for recovering my dumper when it gets stuck, which is actually quite often. Another little change I've done is the grease nipple there. I've moved to here where it is much less prone to be damaged. Similarly, there's a nipple there that always gets wrecked. So all I've done is turn the ram around and it's on the inside where it's protected. Here, if you compare on your machine, this little step here, this is again where I've reamed out because the actual hole in this bracket was elongated, reamed out, inserted a bush to bring the pin back to standard size. The standard pin size on these is one inch. So by reducing back, it means I haven't got to alter all the rams as well. A bit about hydraulic rams. Um, normally you'll find that they're less than perfect on these machines. There's people who specialise in the reconditioning of these and it's amazing what they can do. If your chrome rod is, I've seen them bend and severely worn and pitted and scored. What they'll do is, this is standard size chrome rod which you can buy, they'll just buy a new length of chrome rod, stick a new eye end on it with some magic welding, machine the internal end to fit your piston which they've removed and recovered, job done. Everything about these is recoverable. Sometimes these bodies will split open or become really badly scored or bellied out or whatever. And what they'll do is weld here. They'll chop off the tube. Again, this is stock, stock tube. They'll cut it off. They'll reuse this end, weld a new tube on, machine the ends back to suit your fittings and you've got a hydraulic ends. So as long as you've got a decent end fitting there, and a decent internal part here which holds the seal, you're in business. Thwaites still have stock, or they did when I rebuilt this machine, of both rams and rebuild kits involving all the seals. Some of you may have noticed that one side of the dipper, this part is the dipper, this part is the boom, dipper valve's got this funny kind of extension piece in. Well, it's a bit more than that and I'm going to have to look up at my notes to see what it's actually called. Oops. Fitted this very recently and I'm staggered at the difference it's made. This is called a hydraulic fixed throttle check valve. These were under £10 each and they've absolutely transformed the machine. It used to be really quite a handful um, and quite jerky and things. I also had a problem with air getting into the rams um, and I pulled my hair out and trying to solve this problem. Why is this air getting in? Um, couldn't work it out and these have air in the system is called cavitation um, Really really bad thing for hydraulics um, and bad for the operator because you look incompetent uh, And these have actually transformed the machine And I absolutely recommend them. I'll just run through that now as to what these are and What they're doing and the problem that they're overcoming But basically all this is is like a non-return valve that it allows fluid one way, but not the other That's a non-return valve but what these do is allow full fluid one way as per a non-return valve would only they only allow a restricted amount of fluid to come back the other way why do i want that so just imagine i've 
just loaded a dumper with something and the arm's in this position and I now want to lower the arm down to take my next scoop of soil. So as the arm lowers, I mean obviously this arm has got tremendous weight to it and gravity is going to help lower this arm. In fact, if I were to operate the lever now with the engine stopped, it's still going to lower. As the arm lowers, the piston inside here is going to move up and out. Oil from this side of the ram will be ejected and returned back to the tank. And at the same time, the hydraulic pump needs to be returning supplying oil to the bottom side of the ram underneath the piston. Now, normally, it would be the hydraulic pressure from the pump that is pushing this piston up. And in doing so, expelling the oil from the other side. However, gravity, gravity takes over. And at low engine RPM, the gravity is helping to expel the oil on this side of the piston, inside here, faster than what the pump can supply it coming in. And incredibly, despite, I mean, this, this hydraulic system works at 3,000 pounds per square inch and, and it doesn't leak oil much, but incredibly it will very easily suck oil in, easier than you possibly believe, and you can actually hear it, it's like somebody having a little kind of diarrhoea. Um, and when you then go to take your next dig, the arm's sort of flapping around like this, and you're sort of pulling the handle, and nothing's happening, because the pump is now filling that void because air is compressible, it's filling the void and you're pulling on the handle thinking, oh, what's going on? And all of a sudden, bang, off it goes into action and you just look like a bit of an idiot. Um, and I struggled with it for ages. It's particularly a problem if you, you use the machine at low engine RPM, um, like when I put it in my shed and I'm very carefully manoeuvring it. So you can see the layout of this ram here. This is the dipper. So we've got the, the port on the top, which comes down here. And in this little block, there's like a, a wall. That pipe and that pipe don't join. So the oil comes down here and out there. The supplied oil comes in when you're moving the bucket towards you. Because of course, the other, when you push the lever the other way, everything's in reverse. But the, when you're bringing the arm towards you under gravity, the pump supplies oil into this side and in the bottom to shove that piston up. The problem only occurs in the one direction, which is when you're lowering the, the dipper. In the downwards direction, when the oil's coming this way, it has to pass a restrictor, passes through a 2.2 mil diameter hole before going back to the tank. So it's restricting. What it means is that this side is having to push the oil through and that the gravity isn't really playing its part. In the reverse direction, I mean, you wouldn't want it to be slow all the time. You're going to load, load, labour up the engine, load the hydraulics, make everything get hot. In the reverse direction, this 2.2mm restrictor lifts off its seat and allows you free flow in the reverse direction. The same problem applies down here to the boom ram. I've also fitted one of these valves on the left hand side is the correct one to overcome that problem and these machines if you've ever operated one you'll find that lowering the boom is a really really jumpy operation you you move this handle a, a tiny amount and it just drops like a stone well if you look at it now I'll move it I'm going to move this lever all the way forwards normally the bucket would crash to the ground and cause a big shock but let's look at it now and this is full flow <laughs> And that's not terribly bad, and it's because of that 2.2mm restrictor. Where did the 2.2mm come from? Weights from a different angle use restrictors on the slew rams. Imagine a little ram all the way back there, and makes this move back and forwards. If that moved at the same speed as the bucket ram does, this thing, this bucket, would be at this reach would be, you know, coming past at like 30 mile an hour, and the machine would be quite uncontrollable and unstable. So what they did, they put fixed permanent restrictors in the spool valve block. We'll have a look at that now. It's 
these ones here with the smaller pipes which are the, the slew and this here as standard and it's mentioned in the, th in the Tusker manual is a restrictor. This has a permanent 2.5 millimeter orifice in both of them which slows down the slew. You'll notice when you're slewing on your machine the engine really labours away and the arm moves quite slowly. Well that's for good reason. These were 2.5 mil, but there's one on both the flow and return um, which means that not only is the oil going outwards restricted but the oil returning via the other port which it's having to force is also restricted it's a very basic way of doing it and maybe not quite ideal but again they used the technology that was available and economical to use at the time um, manufacturing technologies moved on and you can buy these amazing hydraulic fixed throttle port valves for under £10 each so what I've done to the slew I've actually drilled these right out and that's contrary to the advice in the Thwaites manual but I've counteracted that there's another of those valves there by fitting another fixed throttle check valve to each of the rams so what's happening when I slew is that the oil on one side of the ram these rams only work as single acting the oil on one side that's being delivered is always available at full flow but as it's pulling this crank around to slew the arm it's having to expel oil from the opposite side and it is the expulsion of the oil from the ram which is restricted so both rams when being delivered with oil get full beans but when the oil is being expelled from the ram they are restricted So this has achieved the same on the slew. I found that if you were having the machine on a bit of an angle, on a, a slope or anything, um, often gravity would would take over and, and pull the slew around like a boat in the wind faster than what the hydraulics could supply the incoming side. And, and then you had air in the slew rams uh, and you had like about two foot of slop in the bucket and, and again you'd look like an idiot. But by fitting one of these fixed throttle check valves to each of the slew rams, I've massively improved the quality of the slewing operation and I'm just staggered at, at how much more modern the machine feels than this jerky old dinosaur. So these valves are available pre-drilled. The, the insert inside is hardened steel to withstand the extreme forces and pressures. Um, so you can pre-order them with the correct size orifice that you desire or you can order them as stock items undrilled for you to drill they're really really hard to drill I had to use a solid carbide drill and even then I struggled um, but because I didn't really know what I was doing um, in terms of what sizes I needed that is the route I took I ordered them as undrilled to drill them myself but now that we know um, that 2.2 mil works really quite well if you were to fit these, that is the size that you'd be ordering. Um, I got these from a firm called Flowfit Hydraulics, who were dead helpful, and despite me not being quite sure of what I aft was after, they put me through to a chap who knows hydraulics a lot. And this is what we arrived at, and it's worked really well. Engine takeover, which of course is not the speed you'd be digging at. Just look how nice and controlled, you can hear that hissing sound. That bucket's coming down. And it's absolutely firm, there's no jiggliness in that at all. And it's returning about the same speed as why it's descending. And that's because of this wonderful check valve I've put in. Exactly the same as on the boom. Nice slow descent. I've had a few people ask me where I got this very nice grading bucket from. It's a three foot wide grading bucket. It was made for me by a firm in South Wales called Evans and Reed. And amazingly, when I rang them up and they said, what machine have you got? 
And I laughed and I said, I can tell you, but I mean, you won't know what it is. And they said, try us. I said, oh, it's the Thwaites Tusker. And they said, oh, we made some buckets for one of them. Gave them the dimensions of the, the pin centers here and did a little kind of sketch to show the orientation of the, the pins to the, the rest of the machine using one of my other buckets. And they produce this. And it's just perfect for the machine. It, is not too big and not too small. It's great for loading aggregate and stuff off a hard surface because you can really scrape up close to the ground and not leave teeth mark everywhere and I'm quite pleased with it. Hope you found this uh, series helpful. When I first started restoring this machine I had no real idea of what I was doing it for and it's turned out to perform the vast amount of work really competently and right now I don't know where I'd be without it.